Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial for Blender. My name is Wendy. In this video, we'll create an easy character model using Blender 4.02. I'll be using a keyboard with a numpad and a three button mouse. This video is for beginner users who already have a basic understanding of navigating in 3D space. Just click anywhere in the viewport to close the splash screen. We'll be using a couple of add-ons that come with Blender. So before we even start, let's come up and enable the add-ons. Come up to the Edit menu and let's go to Preferences. Select Add-ons, then come up to the Search menu and type in Mesh Extra Objects and check the add-on. Now if we look just a bit further down, we can also check Mesh Loop Tools. As you can see, I already have them enabled on my system. Before we move on, let's save the changes. If you have Auto Save checked, then you're good to go. If not, save preferences and close the panel. We won't be using a reference image, however, do pause the video and catch up whenever needed. So let's get started. Left click to select the cube, then hit X on the keyboard to delete it. We're going to create the head of the character first, and to do this we will use a round cube which is one of the extra mesh objects that we've just enabled. Press Shift A and from the Add menu select Mesh. Then look for the extra objects that we just enabled and click on Round Cube. The Round Cube is used to create quad mesh spheres and comes with several presets. Let's drop down and open the panel at the bottom of the left viewport. We're just going to stick with the Round Cube, so come to Radius and set the value to 1. I'm just going to roll my middle mouse wheel and zoom in a little. We can see there are four subdivisions. Let's come back over to the panel and change the value in division. Let's put it to a value of 6. This will give us more geometry to model parts of the character's face with later. To orbit around, I would just click and hold the middle mouse button and move the mouse. Now we're going to switch over to the front viewport. I'll just hit 1 on the numpad to do this. The character is going to be less than 2 meters in height, or two of the darker grey quads on the grid. With the object still selected, press S to scale. You can view the scale values while you scale at the top left of the viewport. You can also check the values in the panel below the viewport when you finish the operation. I scaled the object to a value of 0.5. You can change your values here in the panel below. Next hit G to move the object and Z to constrain it to the Z axis. I moved mine to a height of 1.36 on the Z axis. I'll roll the middle mouse wheel to zoom in and press and hold the middle mouse wheel and the shift key while moving the mouse to pan up and down or from side to side in the viewport. We'll create the head and the body the same size. Let's enable the object gizmos. Come up to the gizmos and check move. And now you can just grab the handle for the axis you want to move on. Ok, before we move on, let's have another look at the character. I can see the head is an oval shape with a straighter edge at the bottom. So to start modelling this shape, we can hit S to scale and X to constrain it to the X axis. As you can see in the panel below, my scale was for 1.2 on the X axis. Ok, I'm happy with that shape and that size. Let's have a look at the side view. Hit 3 on the numpad and that will switch to the right orthographic view. We're not going to modify this. I like this soft round effect. Hit 1 on the numpad and come back to the front viewport. We're going to create the ears next, but before we do this, we're going to delete half of the geometry and add a mirror modifier. That way, we only have to work on one side and everything is mirrored over. Hit tab on the keyboard to enter into edit mode, then switch to vertex mode. You can do this either from the top menu or hit number 1 on the top row of numbers on your keyboard. Before we select any vertices, come up to the viewport shading menu on the top right and click on the x-ray icon. This will toggle on and off the x-ray mode. Click anywhere in the viewport to deselect everything. Now we can box select one side except the center column of vertices. 
then press X to bring out the Delete menu and choose Vertices. Next we can add a modifier. Come over to the Modifier tab. In the Generate menu, select Mirror. I'm going to come over to the Options panel and turn on the cage so we can see the cage around the full object. Come down and turn on Clipping. This is very important so the vertices merge at the center and don't move away from each other or overlap. Also we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to change the subdivision surface levels to 3 in both the viewport and render options. We can come back and change the levels at any time. Now we can extrude some faces to create the ears. But first, let's toggle out of X-ray mode. You can do this from the top menu or just use the shortcut keys Alt Z. Hit 3 to switch to face mode or select the face icon from the menu above. We're going to extrude these three faces. To do this, left click to select the first face, then press and hold the shift key while selecting the other two faces. Hit 1 on the numpad to switch back to the front orthographic view. Hit E to extrude, then drag the faces up to about half the size of the ear, then S to scale. Scale it in slightly. Then let's repeat this. E to extrude and S to scale once more. This will create a nice smooth curve. Orbit around slightly so we get a better view of the top of the faces. Select just the middle face. Then hit numpad 1 to come back to the front orthographic view. Then pull the face up a little so it creates a nice smooth point. I'm happy with the shape. I like the soft round effect. Click anywhere in the viewport to deselect the faces. Orbit around to the back of the head so we can pull out a few of the edges to give the ears a bit more depth. Come over to the subdivision surface modifier and turn on the cage so we can see these edges at the back. Then hit 2 to switch to edge mode and left click and select the middle edge. Then hit G twice, that is GG and you can slide the edge to the back. Orbit around to the side. Next we're going to select the edge above it and this time we're going to hit G and Y and pull it back a little on the Y axis. Or you can just pull the green handle back a wee bit. Orbit around to the front. Later on we'll add a white material to the inside of the faces of the ears. Let's create some more geometry so we can do this. Hit 3 to go into face mode. Then press and hold the shift key while selecting these six faces. Then hit I to inset and this will create new faces inside the existing faces. In the panel below you can see that in thickness my inset value is 0.057. Ok let's carry on. Click anywhere in the viewport to deselect the vertices. We're going to flatten the base of the head now. So hit 1 to switch to vertex mode and numpad 1 for the front orthographic view. Turn on x-ray mode so we can select the vertices on both sides of the object. We're going to use the proportional editing tool to help us select and move the geometry. Come up and turn on the proportional editing tool. The shortcut key is O on the keyboard. Select the center vertices. Hit G and Z and slowly move the vertices Adjusting the radius of influence. Roll your middle mouse wheel to adjust the radius of influence. Everything inside of the circle will be affected. I want to flatten the base so it's not so round. Proportional editing affects the nearby geometry. This means it will adjust the nearby unselected parts of geometry when we move these selected vertices. Well, that's the head finish. Come up and turn off X-ray mode. Now we can create the eyes and the other objects we need to create the character's face. We will create the eyes first and place them in the center of the head. Hit the tab key to come into object mode. We will turn on wireframe to use as a guide for positioning the objects on the surface. So come up to the overlays menu and turn on wireframe. Click anywhere in the viewport to deselect everything. 
Remember, the object is not editable at the moment, the wireframe is only displaying the edges. Let's move on now and add a UV sphere to the scene. Press Shift A and from the Mesh menu select UV Sphere. We can just leave the default settings. Drag the Z handle on the gizmo to move the UV Sphere on the Z axis. It is the scale and just type in the value of 0 0.07 as that is the correct size. Or you can change the values in the panel below. Orbit around and move the sphere in front of the object. Hit numpad 1 to come back to the front orthographic view. We're going to rotate the sphere so the pole on the sphere is facing the front. So hit R and X and type in 90 to rotate 90 degrees on the X axis. Now we can move the sphere along the X and Z axis and place it on the same edges as you see in the video. Orbit around to see the side view. Then hit S and Y and scale on the Y axis. I scale to a value of 0.426 on the Y axis. We can use the gizmo handles to move the sphere and place it so half of it is inside the head. Then I'll orbit around to the top. Or you can switch viewports by hitting numpad 7 and then come into the top view. Now from here we can rotate the sphere slightly. Let's orbit around to see if that's correct. Maybe, maybe we could just rotate that a little bit more. Let's come over and get the rotation tool. Now with this gizmo we can just turn on any of these axes and finish rotating it. When we're finished, come back and select the Selection tool again. Hit numpad 1 and come back to the front orthographic view. With the object still selected, right click and select Shade Smooth. Shade Smooth will make the entire object appear smooth. We have to repeat this operation also for the head, so select the head, right click and select Shade Smooth. Hit in to open the side panel and in transform under the item tab let's look at the values. We need to apply the scale. Hit Ctrl A and select scale from the menu. We have reset the scale values back to 1 on all axes. Ok this time select the sphere. Let's look here at the values. This time we have to apply the rotation and the scale. So hit Ctrl A and select rotation and scale. Hit in to close the side panel. Select the sphere again and come over to the modifier tab. Let's go to the generate menu and select mirror. This time we need to select a mirror object. You can click in the small box and choose the round cube or click on the eye picker and then come over and click on the round cube. And the sphere is mirrored over to the exact same position on the opposite side. Ok we're nearly finished. Just let's add one more modifier. Come back over to the modifier tab and under generate select subdivision surface modifier and change the values in both viewport and render to 3. Before we move on come up to the outliner and name the objects. Double click on the object title to change the name. I'll just type in eyes and then I'll change the name on the round cube to head. Next we're going to create a smooth rounded mesh for a cheek, then add a mirror modifier. Now we could add a cube or a plane and model this or we can use some of the existing geometry. Remember we still have wireframe enabled so we will have to select the head if not already selected and hit the tab key to enter into edit mode. Hit 3 to select the face mode and select this face. Hit shift D to make a duplicate. Left click and the copy will be placed at the same position as the original. Next hit P to separate this element and from the separate menu select selection. So this geometry will be a new mesh. Hit tab to come into object mode then come up to the outliner. Double click on the new mesh and just change the name. I'll just type in cheek. Let's have another look at the image. 
To make things easy, I'll delete this mirror modifier for now. To do this, just click on the small cross on the modifier. With the object selected, hit the tab key to come into edit mode. Then hit the number 1 for the vertex mode. I'll zoom in a little closer by rolling the middle mouse wheel. Then hit A to select everything. And then hit S to scale. I'll turn off the proportional editing. I'm just going to hit O on the keyboard. And then S to scale. I scaled to a value of 1.56. OK, I'll just move it to the side a wee bit. I'm just going to move the handle on the x-axis and move it over. OK, that's a good starting point. Let's come over to the Modify panel. Under Generate, select Solidify. Let's have a closer look at the mesh. It looks weird. Now that's because we need to change the order of the modifiers in the stack. Come over to the panel. Click and hold the icon with the small dots and drag the Solidify modifier above the subdivision surface. Now let's change some of the settings of the Solidify modifier. In Offset, I'll just put it back to 0. And in Thickness, maybe something like 0 0.12. OK, I like the way that looks. Tap into Object Mode. Remember, we still have Wireframe enabled. Now we can add the Mirror modifier. Come over to the Modify tab and under Generate, choose Mirror. Then we will change the order in the stack. Modifiers are calculated from top to bottom in the stack, so to get the desired result, first we will mirror the object. The mirror copy should be placed correctly, just like in this video. However, if not, you might need to select the head object with the eye picker, just like we did before. Grab the gizmo handle for the x-axis and move the objects closer. Make sure clipping is not on on the mirror modifier. Next we will create a small triangular shape to fit here in the middle as the nose. We will duplicate some more geometry to create the nose. First select the head. Tab into edit mode. Hit 3 and switch to face mode and select this face. Hit shift and D to make a copy. Left click and the copy will be placed at the same position as the original. Next hit P to separate this element. And from the separate menu, select Selection. So this geometry will be a new mesh. Hit Tab to switch back to Object Mode. Come up to the Outliner. Double click on the new object and we'll change the name. I'm just going to type in Nose. Then drop down to the Modifier tab and click on the small x for the mirror modifier. We're going to delete the modifier. Let's turn off the wireframe now. Come up to the overlays menu and uncheck wireframe. I'll move it around and move the object on the y-axis. If we look closely, the origin point for this object is here in the middle of the round cube. Let's set the origin point back to the object. To do this, come up to the object menu Set Origin and choose Origin to Geometry. It'll be a lot easier to position the nose correctly if we have the gizmo handles in the center. Hit Numpad 1 to come to the front orthographic view. Then move the object along the x-axis. I switch between the front and the right orthographic viewports to position the object right in the middle. I'll just pan back to the center and reselect the object and I'll move it down along the z-axis. Tab into edit mode and then hit 1 to come into vertex mode. I have the cage on button enabled on the subdivision surface modifier. I'll just go over to the modifier panel and turn it off. Some of the vertices are behind the geometry so let's come up and turn on our x-ray mode. Now select these two vertices and S to scale. Now we can select the top vertices and just pull them down. And maybe scale them out a little more. So hit S to scale again. When you're happy with the shape and the size, hit Tab and come back to Object Mode. 
When we're finished, come up and turn off the X-ray mode. Come over to the Modify tab and under Generate, add the Solidify modifier. OK, come over to the stack now and change the position of the Solidify modifier. Come into the settings and offset, I'll just set it to zero and in thickness, I'll type in 0 0.05. Now that we've added the Solidify modifier, we'll need to change the position a little. Before we move on, let's apply the scale. Hit Ctrl A and select Scale from the menu. Now we can make a copy of this and use it for the tongue. Hit Shift D to create a copy. Left click to confirm the operation. The duplicate is still in the original position. Hit R to rotate and rotate the object 180 degrees. Come down to the panel and you can change your values here if you need to. Notice the origin point is no longer in the center of the geometry since we modified and scaled the geometry, but it's okay. I'll switch between the front and the right orthographic view and use the gizmo to position the object. When you're happy with the shape and the position, hit N to bring up the side panel. Let's have a look at the rotation and the scale. OK, we need to apply the rotation. Hit Ctrl A and from the menu select Rotation. Then hit N to close the panel. OK, let's create the whiskers. Let's have a look at the image. I can see there are six whiskers, three on each side. So we can use a mirror modifier. Hit Shift A to add a new object to the scene. Under Mesh, select Cube. I'll just roll the middle mouse wheel to zoom out. Hit S to scale and just type in a value of 0 0.006. OK, let's grab the handle and bring it up into position. Orbit around and move it out and place it where the whiskers should be placed on the cheeks. And now I'm going to find a better position and place it there. I think that should be where the first whisker should be. When you're happy with the position, come up and turn on the X-ray mode. Tab into Edit mode and select 3 for Face mode. We're going to zoom in a lot closer so we can select the side face. Hit Numpad 1 and come back to the front view. And now E to extrude. And extrude it straight across on the X-axis. Hit E to extrude one more time. We only want short whiskers, so that's it. That's the right length. I'll just do E to extrude one more and very short this time. And that's it. Hit 2 to come to edge mode and select these center edges. I'm going to turn on the proportional editing and just grab this handle and pull it up very slightly to create a very slight curve. When you're happy with it, Tab into object mode, turn off our x-ray mode, and that looks good. Come over now and add a modifier. Under generate, we'll add the subdivision surface modifier. Change the values in both viewport and render to 3. Now right click and select shade smooth from the menu. Let's just create two copies. So then we have the three whiskers. Select the object and I'm just going to hit R and rotate it very slightly. Then Shift D to create a copy. Left click to confirm the operation and R to rotate it a little. Let's repeat that. Shift D. Left click and R to rotate it. And just position it. And there we are. I'll just pull these in a little bit here at the back. Okay. 
let's orbit around. I'll select all three by holding the shift key down and then press Ctrl J to join them. Now they're all one object. Come over to the outliner and I'll change the name. I'll just type in whiskers. And while I'm here, I'll change the name for the tongue. Come back and select the whiskers. Come down to the modifier tab and under generate, add the mirror modifier. We'll change the position of the modifier. Bring it so it's the first on the list. Grab the little eyedropper and come over and click on the head. And that will mirror the whiskers over to the opposite side. There we are. That's looking good. I'm pleased with that. OK, let's just apply the scale and the rotation for the whiskers. Select the whiskers again and hit Ctrl A and select Rotation and Scale. Before we move on, now would be a good time to save your work if you haven't already. So pause the video and I'll see you back here in a minute. OK, now we're going to start to create the body of the character. I'll roll the middle mouse wheel to zoom out. We're going to add a new mesh object. Make sure the course is in the center of the world. If not, hit Shift S and from the pie menu, select Corsa to World Origin. Next, Shift A, go to the Mesh menu and select Cube. I'll zoom out a little and hit Control 2 and this will add a subdivision surface modifier to the object. If we look over here at the modifier panel, we can see that the subdivision surface has a value at 2 for render and for the viewport. Hit numpad 1 to come to the front view. Hit S to scale and just type in 0.46. Or you can change the values in the panel below. Move the cube up now so it's just inside the head. Make sure you've left enough room at the bottom for the legs. Before we move on, let's apply the scale. Hit Ctrl A and select Scale from the menu. OK, let's come up and turn on the X-ray mode. Tab into Edit mode, click anywhere to deselect. Hit 1 for the vertex mode and select these top vertices. And then press S to scale. I scale them into 0.7. You can change your values in the panel below. Hit 3 to come into the right orthographic view and grab these vertices and just pull them in a little. And these ones also on that side will bring these in. Hit numpad 1 to come back to the front viewport. Tab into object mode and come over to the modify tab. Click on the small arrow and select apply. We're going to apply this modifier. This will give us more geometry to work with. With the object still selected, right click and from the menu select Shade Smooth. We're going to delete half the object and add a mirror modifier. So tab into Edit Mode, 1 for Vertices, and box select half the object. Then hit X and select Delete Vertices. Come over to the Modify tab and under Generate, Select the mirror modifier. Let's come into the settings and turn on clipping. Then just come up and turn on the cage so we can see the cage on both sides of the object. Come back over to the modify tab and this time we're going to add the subdivision surface modifier. Come into the settings and I'll just put in a value of 3 for both render and viewport. We can come back and change these settings at any time. OK, let's have a look. Come up now and turn off the X-ray mode. Make sure you're in vertex mode and select this vertex. Hit X to delete the vertex. By deleting just one vertex, we've removed four faces. Zoom in closer. Press and hold the Alt key 
and click on this edge and that will select the whole loop of edges. Right click anywhere in the viewport and from the menu select loop tools. These were the extra add-ons that we added at the beginning of the video. Select circle and now this has converted the edges into a circular shape and hit numpad 1 to come to the front view. Next I'll grab the Y circle and move all these vertices to a better position. Now we can extrude some geometry to create the legs. So hit E to extrude and pull the geometry down to about this length. Hit R to rotate and rotate this edge slightly. Then E to extrude and this time pull the geometry down a lot longer this time as we're going to straighten this edge and we don't want the vertices to overlap. Hit S, Z and 0 and this will flatten the edge. I'll orbit around and check on the shape. We want to have a circular shape here, so right click and from the loop tools menu select circle. Hit numpad 1, then E to extrude and pull the geometry down to the ground level. This will help create a little more shape to the leg. Now we're going to close off the leg. Orbit around. Before we move on, Come up and turn off the proportional editing. Hit E to extrude and right click so the vertices are placed in the original position. Then S to scale and scale the edge in a little. There's several ways we could close this off. But we're going to use the grid fill. So come up to the face menu and select grid fill. I'll just leave the default settings. Click anywhere in the viewport to deselect everything. Before we move on, I'd like to move this vertex, it's just hidden here in the crease. We can turn the x-ray mode back on to do this. Ok, that's a lot better. Now we can see the vertices. Hit numpad 1 for front view. I'll grab this white circle and move the vertices into a better position. Something like that. When you're happy with the position, we'll move on. Now we're going to add two more loop cuts. The first one we'll place here at the bottom. So press Ctrl R, left click to add the loop cut and slide it down. Don't bring it down too far or it will tighten the edge somewhere around here and left click again to confirm the position. We're going to add one more loop cut just here. Hit Ctrl R and left click twice to confirm the position and the operation. When you're finished, come up and turn off X-ray mode. Later on we're going to add a white colour here and this edge that we created here is going to be the height of the boot. If you need to change the position of the edge, I'll click to select the loop of edges, then hit TG for edge slide and now you can change the position. We're going to use the same technique that we have just used to create the arms. So orbit around and select this vertex. Hit X and delete the vertex. Press Alt and click on this edge to select the loop of vertices, then right click and from the loop tool menu select circle and we're left with a nice circular shape. However, I'm going to scale this a little so hit S to scale and just bring it in slightly. Next hit numpad 1 to come to the front orthographic view. I'm going to grab all these vertices. To do this, I'll grab the white circular part of the gizmo. I'll move them up slightly, creating a small shoulder for the character. Before you start to extrude the geometry, you need to think about the position you want the arms to be in. In this video, I am just going to extrude the arms down beside the body in a relaxed position. However, if you would prefer to have a T-pose, then just extrude them straight out. Hit E to extrude and pull out the geometry to the side. I'll grab the white circular gizmo and just pull them down slightly. E to extrude and I'll pull out some more geometry. Then R to rotate again. And let's move it down to a better position, closer to the body. Then hit S to scale and scale them in a little. Reposition it again closer to the body. Now hit E to extrude and extrude it down longer than we really want the arms to be. Okay, somewhere around here. 
Now hit S, Z, 0, and this is going to straighten the bottom edge. Orbit around, and let's have a look at the shape. We're going to convert this to a circle, so right click and from Loop Tools, select Circle. Then hit F to fill this face. We can add a bevel to this edge now, so hit Ctrl B and move the mouse to create a bevel. Roll the middle mouse wheel twice to create two extra loop cuts. Make sure the center vertices don't join or overlap while you're beveling. If this happens, press Ctrl Z to undo it and repeat the operation. OK, let's orbit around and have a look at the length of the arm. I'm pleased with that shape and the length. If you want to adjust them, just grab the handle and just pull it up slightly along the z-axis. Somewhere around there is fine. Click anywhere in the viewport to deselect everything. And let's orbit back around and have a look at that center face. Hit 3 to come into face mode. Select the face, then hit X and from the menu select delete faces. Then hit 1 for vertex mode and I'll select this ring of vertices. Then hit Ctrl F for the face menu and select grid fill. Click anywhere in the viewport to deselect the vertices and orbit around. Let's have a closer look. I'm going to tweak a few of the vertices along the shoulders and maybe pull out a few of the vertices on the side of the arm so it's not so flat. I'll select these vertices, then come up and turn on the proportional editing tool. OK, I'm just going to pull them up slightly. Don't forget you can roll your middle mouse wheel to change the radius of influence. I'll do the same for the vertices along the arm. I'll just select these three vertices and pull them out a little so the arm's not so flat. OK, that looks all right there. Let's turn around. I'm going to have a look at these vertices here under the arm. I'll press and hold the ALT key and click on this edge, so I select the whole loop of vertices. I'm also going to rotate this edge slightly, so hit R to rotate. I'll undo this movement, and then hit O to turn off the proportional editing first. Now I can hit R again and slightly rotate this edge. I'll orbit around now and just pull out a couple of more vertices. This little character is going to have little white paws, so we need to add one more little loop cut around here, which is going to be the height of the paw. So hit Ctrl R and add a loop cut. Next we're going to flatten this edge, so make sure none of the vertices from the other edges are close by. Hit S, Z, 0 and that will straighten the edge. Now you can hit GT twice and just slide this edge along the faces. Somewhere about here. Click anywhere in the viewport now to deselect these vertices and orbit around. OK, tap into edit mode and that's it, we've finished the body. Let's add a little white piece here right in the front. Now would be a good time to pause the video and save your work. Let's have another look at the image and the shape we're creating. OK, to create this shape we will use some of the existing geometry. So select the object first and come over to the outliner and let's change the name before we move on. I'll just type in here body. Tap into edit mode, then select 3 for face mode. Then hit C to switch to circle select mode and select these faces. When you're finished, right click to toggle back into box select mode. OK, you know what's next. Shift D to duplicate. Click to confirm. Hit P to separate. And choose selection from the menu. Now tab out of edit mode. And now we've just created a separate element. We can come over to the outliner now and change the name before we move on. I'll just type in body white part. Tap into edit mode, 
Then select one for vertex mode. I only want to curve this edge just slightly. So just select the vertex, hit GG and slide it along the edge. I'll zoom in a little so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'll just grab this vertex, hit GG and just slide it down along this edge. I'm going to do the same down here. GG and now I can slide it up. I might move these vertices also. This one, GG and slide that up slightly and that one, I'll slide it down, GG, and just slide that down. And that's all we need to do. I like that shape. Tab back into object mode, and then come over to the modify panel. Now we're going to go to generate and add the solidify modifier. Come over to the settings, and we need to change the position. Grab the solidify modifier and drag it above the subdivision surface modifier. And here in thickness, I'll just change the value to 0.05. I'll orbit around and push the geometry out a little. There we are. We've just created the white piece in the front. That looks good. Next, we're going to create a small piece of geometry for the inside of the ear. This will be quick and simple. First, select the head. Tab into edit mode and hit 3 for face mode and select the 6 faces that we created with the inset. Then press shift D to duplicate. Click to confirm. Hit P to separate and choose selection from the menu. Tab out of edit mode. Before we move on, come over to the outliner and change the name. I'll just type in ears. Before we add the modifier, we're going to adjust the position of some of the vertices. So tab into edit mode, then one for vertex mode. Then hold the shift key down while you select these four bottom vertices. Now let's just drag them down. Come up and turn on the X-ray mode. And let's push these out slightly. That's better. Okay, come over to the Modify tab now and add the Solidify modifier. We need to change the position in the stack. So grab the Solidify modifier and bring it above the Subdivision Surface modifier. And here in Thickness, I'll just type in a value of 0 0.04. Turn off the X-ray mode. Tab into Object mode. And let's just push these out a little. There we are, they're looking good. Okay, so the only thing we have to do now is to create a tail. Okay, let's add a new object, hit Shift A, and from the Mesh menu, select Cube. I'll just roll out. Then hit S to scale and scale it very small so it fits right between the legs. I'll hit numpad 3 to come to the right orthographic view and pull it out a little. Then I'm going to hit S to scale and scale it slightly along the Y axis. Something like that. Turn on X-ray mode. Tab into edit mode. And I'm going to add an edge loop right here in the middle. Hit Control R and just add one here right in the center. Now select these vertices and just push it down. This will create a curve. We're only creating a small box shape object, but as soon as we add the modifier, it will smooth out nicely. Just a very basic shape. I'll select everything so you can see the shape a little easier. Come over to the Modify tab and let's add the Subdivision Surface modifier. And here in the settings, we'll change the viewport and the render to 3. Tab into Edit Mode, then right click and from the menu, select Shade Smooth. Now we can move it into position, then come up and turn off the X-ray mode. Click anywhere in the viewport to deselect everything. 
Okay, let's orbit around and see the end result. Before we add some materials, let's create a background. Okay, to create the background, hit Shift A and from the Mesh menu, select Plane. We're just going to scale this, so I'm just going to type in S to scale and the number 12. Tab into Edit Mode. Then hit 2 for Edge Mode and select this back edge. Next hit E, Z and let's extrude this up. When you're finished, tab into Object Mode and zoom out. Now we can bevel the back edge and make it smooth. Or we could add a bevel modifier and once we've added the lighting setup, we can always come back and make adjustments to the size of the bevel if we need to. So come over to the Modify tab and under Generate, select Bevel. Here in Amount, I'm just going to boost this up to something like 0 0.34, something like that. And in Segments, 20, 30. Now with the object still selected, right click and select Shade Smooth. OK, now that's the background. Before we move on, come up to the Outliner and let's change the name. I'll just type in BG for background. While I'm here in the outliner, I'll select the cube and change the name. I'll type in tail. Now we can start to create some simple basic materials for the character. Make sure the background is still selected. Then come over to the material panel. First click on new to create a new material. Then on Material to change the name. I'll type in BG. Next, click on the base color. From here you can select any color from the color picker and define a color value. Or you can copy the hex value that I'm using. I'll type in 6699CC. Then hit Enter on the keyboard. We've applied the material, however we still can't preview any color. We need to come up and change the viewport shading. So come up and turn on the material preview mode. Now that's a lot better. Now we're going to create a different shade of blue for the head and the body. So select the head and come over to the material panel. Let's repeat the operation. Here in material, I'm going to type in blue. You can choose any color from the color picker or copy the hex value that I'm using. I'm using 0476D0. Then hit enter on the keyboard. I'm just going to leave all the default settings for this character. OK, come over now and we'll select the body. We're going to apply the same blue material to the body. So click here on the small material button and select the blue material. And now that's been applied to the body. Select the ear. Create a new material. This time we're just going to use Blender's default white colour. I'll just change the name to white. We're going to apply this white material to the body part, the whiskers and the cheeks. And there's an easy method to do this all at once. So hold the shift key down and select the whiskers, the cheeks and the body part. Then select the ears as the last object. Then hit Ctrl L and from the Link Transfer Data menu, choose Link Materials. Now if I just select the object and check the material that's added, I can see it's been applied. OK, so you can use whatever method works best for you. Let's carry on now. Now we're going to create the eye material. Select the eye. Change the name to black. I'll click here in the base colour. And from the colour picker, I'll drag this dial right down to the bottom to create a black colour. Next, select the nose. And we're going to create a pink material. I'll just change the name to pink. And this time I'll use the colour picker to select a pink colour. There we are, I'm happy with that. Now let's select the tongue. I'll add a new colour and change the name to red. 
and I'll also use the colour picker and I'll select a red material. Now we can add a white material for the boots and the paws. This time we'll use a different method as they're not separate objects. Select the body, then come up and click on the small eye icon on the outliner to hide the background first. Then turn on X-ray mode. Tab into edit mode and hit numpad 1 to come to the front orthographic view and zoom in. Hit 1 for vertex mode and box select all of these bottom vertices. Just orbit around to make sure you do have all the back vertices too. Yes, that's good. Come over to the material editor now. As you can see, this object already has a blue material applied. So click on the small plus icon to create a new material. Change the name and just type in white 001. We'll just keep the default white settings. Now we need to assign this material just to those vertices. So come over and click on the assign button. And there we are, you can see the material has been applied. If I look closely at my character, I can see that the top part is not straight. However, I did straighten that edge earlier. I can fix this. I can select the top loop above it and slide it down to tighten this edge, or I can add a new loop cut. I'll hit Ctrl R and add a new loop cut and slide it down. Then I'll hit R and rotate it slightly. Then I'll hit TG and slide it down. If you have to do the same, be careful that you don't overlap your edges or your vertices. Now I'll assign the material to the pore. The arm is so close to the body, so I'll just orbit around and select the center vertex at the bottom of the arm. Then I'll hit Control and Numpad Plus to select more edges. Switch to the front viewport. Now come over to the material panel and click on the assign button to assign the white material to these edges. I can see I have the same issue on the arm. I'll quickly fix this. I'll hit Ctrl R to add a loop cut. Then I'll slide it down slightly. Then hit R to rotate. And then I'm going to rotate it a little more just to straighten it out a little. Okay, that's fixed the issue just by slowly rotating it to the correct angle. However, if you need to, you can hit GG and just slide the edge down slightly. Okay, we're nearly finished adding all the materials. Tab into edit mode, orbit around, and we'll select the tail. And if you want, select the body, then hit Ctrl L, and you can link the material. Or we can click on the material button, open the browser, and select the blue material. Click anywhere in the viewport to deselect everything. Well, that's all the modeling finished for this little character, and we've applied a simple basic material. If you're still with me, good on you. I hope you enjoyed modeling this character as much as I did. Now let's come up and turn off the X-ray mode and turn back on the background. Save your work, and let's quickly set up some lights and render this little character. We're going to split the workspace into two areas. Place the cursor in the corner. And when a small cross appears, left click and drag the edge of the new workspace into the center. Now we have two viewports. On one side we'll set up the camera and the render viewport. And on the other side we'll quickly add a three-port lighting setup. Click anywhere to activate the viewport. Then come up to the viewport shading menu. You can scroll through the menu by rolling your middle mouse wheel. Now let's set up the other viewport. Click anywhere to activate it. Then come up to the top menu and from the viewport shading, switch to solid mode. Zoom out and have a look at the scene. You should still have the default camera and light in the scene. Shift select both of them. Then right click and from the menu, select moved to collection. We will create a new collection in the outliner and place the camera and the lights in there to keep everything organized. Now in the collection menu, select new collection 
and change the name. I'll just type in something like camera and lights and then hit OK. Go to the outliner and scroll through the menu and right at the bottom there is a new collection with the camera and the light. Come up to the top of the menu and click on the small arrow to collapse the tree menu. Now any new elements that we add into the scene will be placed into the new collection. Come over to this viewport and click anywhere to activate it. I have my character in a good position to render, so pause the video if you have to and find a position that you're happy with, as we're going to align the camera to this viewport. To do this we'll use the shortcut keys Control, Alt and Numpad 0, and the camera's in position. Next we're going to set up the renderer and change some settings. So come over to the rendering tab. For this video I'm going to use Cycles Render and I'll change my device to GPU. Then I'll change my viewport samples to 32 and the render samples to 50 just for a quick render for this video. Now scroll down to Color Management. Blender version 4 comes with a new view transform option, the AGX. You can either use this one or switch to Filmic. I'll leave mine at AGX. And in Look, I'm going to choose one of these. I'll choose the high contrast as I like the vibrant look for this character. Next come into the Output Properties. And from here we can change the resolution. I'm just going to change mine to 1080 by 1080. Now let's have a look in the output. I'll leave the default file format at PNG. Come over to the camera area now. Let's have a look at the position. I'll zoom in by rolling the middle mouse button. Well, this is great to change the size of the camera region on the screen. However, we can't zoom inside the actual camera view. This is because we need to lock the position of the camera to the view first. So hit N to bring up the sidebar and in view, come to lock and check the lock camera to view. Now we can zoom in and out and pan side to side inside the camera view. Select the camera by clicking on this edge, then come over to the camera properties. For this simple character, I'll leave the perspective lens type and the default focal length. Scroll down to viewport display and let's have a look at the composite guides. This is a very handy tool to help you set out the composition. Let's just have a look at thirds and at centre. Guidelines are placed over the camera view so you can tweak the position. I'll go for centre and if you look at my little character, it's not in the centre. I'm going to tweak the position. And there's an easy method to do this. Come up to Shift, X and Y. We can tweak our values here and center this little character. OK, when you're finished, come back and turn off the guidelines. Come up to the viewport shading menu and switch to render preview. We can see that the whole viewport is rendering in real time. We only need to see the rendering in the camera view. So hit Ctrl B and box select all of the camera view. And that is set the render region. We're nearly finished. Let's set up a quick basic three port light setting for this video. Before we start, we have one default light in the scene. Come up to the outliner, click on the small eye icon and turn off the light for a minute. I'm going to add an HDR image. This is just optional. I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to download the same image. Come over to the World Properties and click on the small button next to Color. From the Texture menu, select Environment Texture. Press the Open button and navigate to where you saved the file. Select the file and click on Open Image. OK, the strength is too high. Come down and change the value. I'll set mine to 0 0.2. 
Come back up to the outliner now and turn on the light again. Select the light to activate it and then come into the light settings. We can see we're using a point light and it has a value of 1000. I'm going to lower this to something like 500. And also in radius, I'll change the radius to 2, so it's 2 meters. This will soften the shadows. I'm going to change the position. I want to place this point light right behind the character, so it separates the character from the back wall. I'll hit numpad 7 to come into the top view. Let's come back over to the settings and I think I'll change the colour of this light. I'll use the colour picker and I'll select the very pale blue. Next we're going to create two more lights. We can either bring two more lights into the scene or just duplicate this one and change the values. So hit Shift D to make a copy and let's drag it over here to the right side of the camera. Now with the new light selected, come over to the settings. I'm going to switch to an area light. Also I'll change the colour to a whiter shade. And then I'll change the strength to 200 for now. Also I'll change the shape. I'll select disc. And I'll change the radius to 4. The larger the radius, the softer the shadows will be. Now come back to the top view. Hit R and let's rotate the target. OK, now we can create a copy of this light. So hit Shift D and then bring it over here to the left side of the camera. Rotate the target. I'll give this a different colour, something a yellow orangey colour like that. I'm going to change the strength. I'll bring this down to something like 80 or 85. I'll leave the shape set at disk and also the size at 4 metres. Adding a good light set up to any scene correctly can be difficult. It can take some time tweaking the strength and the position of each light to get the correct look you're looking for. This is only a very basic setup. Next hit numpad 3 for the right orthographic view and we're going to drag the backlight down so it can create a nice rim around the head and the shoulders of the character. We can also tweak the position of the light from the camera view. I'm just going to centre it a little more. You can also adjust the position of the area lights if you need to. I'll just select them, hit R and just rotate them slightly. When you're happy with the position, let's have a look at the background. There's a bit of a harsh change of colour behind the character. We can adjust the bevel modifier again to smooth this out a little more. Select the background or come up to the outliner and select the background here. Then come into the modify panel and let's boost up the settings. I'm going to boost mine up to something like 0.7 or 0.8. And this creates a larger curve and gives us a nice gradient background. One more important thing to do before we render, save your work just in case. Remember, I have only set my render samples to 50, so if you like the finished render, you can always re-render and boost the sample values a little higher. Come up to the render menu and select render image. When you finish rendering, Go to the image menu and from here you can save your image. And this brings us to the end of this easy character modeling tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and fun. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Enjoy!